So this laptop sits next to Kevin when we play, and this is what controls our backing tracks, our metronome, our stage lights, and our video. Okay, let's zoom in here. Obviously, this is Shinra right here, right? At the very top here, we have reference track, which I have muted. Uh, let's unmute that. All this is is basically just it's it's the actual song. I should also note that the laptop audio is not coming through the stream, so any all the sound that you're going to hear is be being picked up off my mic here. That's also picking up my voice. So we have the reference track here. This is just literally the FLAC version of the actual songs. And these are, of course, muted when we play. This is here literally for reference purposes. And I use this more often than not when I'm programming lights. I can get visual cues off of like the kick and snare drum because I could see the transients in the wave, wave file. The top track here is always muted. There's really nothing to it. The track right here, tracks. These are the backing tracks that play behind us. This is all the keyboards, all the orchestra. Um, occasionally we'll put a guitar harmony on here, but we try, we try to stay away from putting too many guitars on the backing track. Since we have two guitarists, we want to play as much of it as possible. So tracks, turn this up, choir, I don't know how well you could hear that, but, um, and a lot of these tracks are just exported from, um, like the final versions of our album. So that's all the backing tracks are. The interludes, this is basically just another backing track. We just have all the interludes on like a separate track here, just for ease of ease of programming, basically. Yeah, it's really, really quiet. It's, Mike's probably not going to pick it up, but basically the interludes are just things that go in between the songs to fill in the space. So there's no awkward silence. Uh, so yeah, so that is, uh, those are the tracks and the interludes. Uh, the metronome, the click track. Um, this is really exciting. <laughs> this is just uh, constant clicking in our ears. We don't do the, like the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We always just constant click, click, click. We just learn that that works better for us. Um, and that is going into all of our ears. Um, dependent on if we want it to, which we all we all do. This is actually something new here, the count off track. So this is something that is on the same track as our in ears. And I got this idea from Kyle from Lame Genie, giving a verbal count off, and only we can hear this. It's basically like doing a one, two, three, four count off for us, because like I said, we're just using the standard clicks. We're not doing the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This gives us additional, it, it reinforces the like the starting point in the song. And we also have a little cue as to what song is coming up. So it defeats the need of a set list. So right here, this comes in our ear. X death. <laughs> so right there, it says it's, it's just me saying X death, because that's the song that we're going to play next. And then there's the verbal cue, the count off. One, two, three, four. It's just me saying one, two, three, four. And that in conjunction with the click track, so it basically one two three four and you know that's that's when we start hey guys so there's one thing that i forgot to mention during this live stream and that is that although we have four separate tracks here those are all combined into one stereo out so the laptop is only sending one stereo out into our mixer, which the mixer then kind of splits into two mono tracks. So anything that's going to front of house, which is the interludes and the backing tracks, that is all panned hard left. The click and the count offs, those are panned hard right. And the panning is happening within Reaper here. If you're familiar with the Reaper interface, you can see on the screen grab here that the green tracks are panned 100% to the left. And then the count off and the clicks, those are panned 100% to the right. So within Reaper, we're just sending out one stereo out file basically uh, yeah that's all i wanted to jump in and say so uh back to the stream down here we have the lights and i'll go i'll actually get into that in just a second i'm gonna go down here to the video first so all we do is basically in a separate software we will put together our whole video file so basically what i will do is i'll get the set lined up exactly how it's going to be bounce that as like an mp3 or a wave or whatever something that i could then throw into video editing software and then in the video editing software i'll compile gameplay footage and I'll bounce that as an mp4 video and then within Reaper here you can just pop out the video and um, it basically is going to play right along. Reaper loads video files automatically and it's going along in sync perfectly with the click track and the music that we're playing live. The, the last little bit of the video, though, is that 
<clears throat> and I can't really show this on the stream because they don't have multiple monitors or anything. But once you plug in your second video source, whether it be a, it, it, you know, it's usually like a projector or something. Um, you basically plug that in to your, your laptop, add it as if it's a second monitor. I should say that I mean, that this is Windows based, not Mac based. This is going to be a little bit different on a Mac. Once you add that second video source, like a projector, Windows will think it's a second monitor. So you have to go into your display settings and make sure the second monitor, you have to choose the option to extend display, extend these displays instead of duplicate these displays. So then once you do that, you basically drag this over onto your second screen and then basically full screen that shit and then you're good to go. Let's talk lights. Where were we earlier? We were on Shinra earlier. So this is basically MIDI right here, right? The way that this is routed is we're sending MIDI out from our laptop into a software called QLC Plus. This is QLC Plus. It is a lighting software that's free, super simple, very easy to program stuff on. We basically set up our functions and our scenes all here with the different lights that we have. It's pretty, pretty easy to get these figured out. Once, once you understand how DMX lighting programming works, it's relatively simple. Uh, it's very intimidating at first, but once you get, get a grasp on it, it's, it all makes sense and it's very, very simple. But basically we have all these different lighting commands programmed here. Essentially these two, these four yellow lights are the scrim lights. These colored here, all of these that start with MH, these are all moving head. So these are the moving heads on the ground. Um, the wash colors are down here. These tan or beige-ish colors here, um, buttons here are the, um, these are the movement buttons for the floor moving heads. These two freeze buttons are the same, they're for the same lights, but they freeze the lights in, in place. So they're facing like the camera. Four fades, these are for the moving heads. And then on the right here, these are all the vertical moving heads. Each individual light is programmed separately as opposed to the floor moving heads where that's not the case. Uh, Cause we have four different, we have two different moving heads. So there's potentially four different, I'm sorry, eight different commands per light. I don't have them that separated on the floor lights, but we do on the vertical ones. Cause there's cooler stuff you could do with lights going sideways, I think. So we kind of wanted to go that route. And then these 12 controls down here are all for the movement of the vertical head. So this is all the vertical head movement. And then these two sections here are for the horizontal movement. Um, I'm going to throw some fog into the garage and I'm going to switch the camera over. As I'm hitting the buttons here on the laptop, it's going to activate the lights here. See? And there is zero lag in this, which is awesome. It kind of makes this all possible. If this if there was any sort of latency, it would really like not be worth it. I'm gonna throw some more fog in here real quick. Okay, so yeah, as you see here, when I hit these lights here, it's gonna make the lights on the stage, activate. So left, 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 right, and right, right. So there's um, there's four commands on that, and that's the DMX dimmer pack. Basically lets you plug in any device, as long as it has a standard plug, and you can program MIDI, or I should say you program DMX, into this software QLC, and we're basically using MIDI to talk to this software. As I hit these other lights too, red, green, blue, white, and then I have these lights, these program, these um, settings here, which are just like uh, combinations. So like blue and green, red and blue, white and green, so on and so forth. And just to show you guys, to show like a better idea here, I'm going to turn on some of these tilts. So I'm going to go tilt slow on the front and tilt slow on the back. And I'll activate these now. So I can change these at will here. Red. And white. Yeah, so... Um, Pretty simple over here on the right side. And apologize if I made this uh, laptop screen too small. I can, I can program um, each of these individual lights. So like this light is on a separate channel from this light. 
and so on and so forth. White, white, blue, blue. You know, so, so we can basically get all those going. I'm going to turn on some of the slow movers here so I can show you guys how those work. See? So that's basically how the lights are programmed. So the Reaper session, we basically have MIDI programmed here. So each of these MIDI keys on the piano roll is set to a different command in this grid here. And for that, we're using a virtual MIDI cable. So we're using Loop MIDI, which is just a free virtual MIDI cable. And so that is set to our input. So our input is coming out of Reaper into QLC+. So this track here in Reaper, if I go to my routing, output is Loop MIDI port. So it's sending the MIDI out via a virtual MIDI cable into QLC+. So the input on QLC+, is the Loop MIDI port. It then has to send the signal outbound. So the outbound signal is going into our little USB dongle. So we're basically sending all of this information out via USB. And I, I bought like a $70 USB to DMX converter. So that's what's going output right here. So this is going, like once I hit these, it's being sent out via USB into DMX, which is what's going into our lighting chain. So all of our lights are actually rigged and routed together in one, so it's one chain. So as the songs go on here, it's activating different commands. Let me, um, let me stop these, and then I'll let a little bit of a song play so you could see, kind of see some of this in action. Here, I'll show you some of the more detailed, kind of like impactful stuff here. This is the this is the end of the song. That kind of stuff turns out really cool for the really hard hitting parts. Um, and yeah, so we have that <laughs> literally for every song in our set has light programming like that. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it looks looks kind of crazy and don't get me wrong, it was a lot of work, but um, definitely worth it for setups like this.